The man behind the bat, Bruce Wayne, made a large impact on Gotham City when he first returned in 1891. The Batman first started as a rumor. Many were not sure whether he even really existed. Though the Batman was the one actively in the field fighting crime, he was not alone in his crusade. If not for his extensive network of allies, the Bat's crusade against criminality would have been doomed to fail. Of all his allies, Alfred Thaddeus Crane Pennyworth was his most indispensable partner. Born in 1818, Alfred was raised in the East End of London by his father, Jarvis Pennyworth, and mother, Mary Pennyworth. He had a sister, Margaret, and a brother, Wilfred, both younger than he was. His mother passed away when he was 15, and Jarvis did his best to care for Alfred and his siblings in that difficult time. In spite of this, Jarvis was more strict and regimented than Mary had been, having been a soldier and butler for years. Alfred, while obedient, resented his father for this. Upon reaching 17 years of age in 1835, Alfred left his family to begin a career in acting. Jarvis did not approve of this. After an intense argument, Jarvis took Alfred's brother and sister with him to America, wanting to get away. Jarvis soon took up a position as butler at Wayne Manor in Gotham City, New Jersey. The Waynes were ecstatic to bring someone on as experienced as Jarvis Pennyworth. Alfred, still resentful, continued with his acting career until 1837, when he decided to enlist in the military like his father. Acting was taking him nowhere fast, and he felt the need for discipline in his life, though he would never admit that to his father. In December of 1837, he fought in the rebellions of 1837 to 1838. He traveled with his regiment to Canada and fought in the armed conflicts that took place there, aiding loyalists to the crown. He saw many injustices occur here and lost his heart for what they were doing. After finishing his tour with the British military, he fell into a depression. Alfred also moved to America, wanting a change of scenery and a fresh start. He decided to pursue acting again. Upon moving to Gotham, he reconnected with his father. They rekindled their relationship. It was much more amicable now that Alfred had served in the military as well. Alfred liked to frequent bars and clubs in Gotham that had boxing matches available. It was here, in 1853, that he met Thomas Wayne. Thomas also frequented lower-class bars to see how the citizens of Gotham lived. Neither one made the connection that Alfred's father worked for the Waynes at first. After an even boxing match, the two became acquainted. Thomas and Alfred learned of their mutual connection through Jarvis, and Alfred determined for himself what kind of people the Waynes were. Alfred's only frame of reference beforehand had been his father's accounts of them. He saw Thomas as an admirable man. They remained in contact throughout the next few years. Alfred and his siblings were soon taken by surprise when their father died under mysterious circumstances. The police officially stated that he had died when his stagecoach crashed into a ditch, but were unable to pinpoint the cause of the crash. Alfred was grief-stricken and confused. Wilfred and Margaret had moved back to England, and it would take them some time to arrive to help with funeral arrangements. Thomas and Martha Wayne were a comfort to Alfred during this time, and his friendship with them increased as well. It was also during this difficult time that he met sister Leslie Tompkins. Leslie Tompkins came to Gotham from Pennsylvania, and was of Quaker descent. She did not agree with everything in the religion and lifestyle of the Quakers, but she agreed with their fight for social reform and abolishment of slavery. Leslie had a heart for helping people, even from a young age. In Pennsylvania, she had worked tirelessly to help those in need, working at a free clinic for the disenfranchised. She soon felt a vocational calling. Leslie joined the convent as a nun. Sister Leslie moved to Gotham City in 1853 and took over the school and orphanage at St. Caldwell's not long after. Sister Leslie had a fiery spirit and drive that helped her to gain the respect of almost anyone she came into contact with. She spent the next 30 years turning St. Caldwell's into one of the best free schools in the state. It was soon after Jarvis Pennyworth's passing that Sister Leslie came across Alfred praying in the chapel at St. Caldwell's. She approached him and consoled him in his grieving, 
and the two struck up conversation. From that day forward, the two were friends. Sister Leslie's tenacity complemented Alfred's disciplined and artistic personality. Their friendship only grew stronger over the years. In 1962, Thomas Wayne hired Alfred as the new family butler. Alfred was apprehensive at first, but the longer he served the Waynes, the more he found himself fitting into the role of buttling. While Thomas tended the wounded in the Civil War, Alfred took care of Martha and their newborn son, Bruce. Alfred enjoyed the job and stayed with the Waynes for years. He was an advocate for Sister Leslie's school, and the Waynes enrolled Bruce there after meeting Sister Leslie themselves. By November of 1871, Alfred had become somewhat disillusioned. He'd originally come to America hoping to further his acting career and wanting to rekindle that dream. He found himself planning to leave the employ of the Waynes within the year. Before that could become a possibility, tragedy struck. With the murder of Thomas and Martha Wayne in early 1872, Alfred had reached a decision point. Either he could turn Bruce over to the state and send him to the orphanage and Sister Leslie, or he could stay and watch out for the boy. What helped him reach that decision was the look on Bruce's face at the police station. Alfred saw himself, also an orphan, in Bruce. Alfred could not leave him to fend for himself. He took on legal guardianship of the boy. He encouraged Bruce to continue his schooling at St. Caldwell's. Alfred hoped that being around Sister Leslie would help the boy to heal. Sister Leslie saw the hurt and anger in Bruce, and personally took great pains to help him process his grief. Bruce grew up grateful for his surrogate father, Alfred, and surrogate mother, Sister Leslie. Years later, in 1879, Bruce left Gotham City abruptly. Alfred knew of his plans, but there was little he could do to stop him. Bruce instructed Alfred to care for the Wayne estate and business in his absence. Alfred worked closely with Lucius Fox to do so. Alfred saw Bruce as a son, and watching him leave was one of the hardest things he had ever experienced. Bruce all but disappeared when he left Gotham. We read in the journals of both Alfred and Bruce about Bruce's journey of training, but also Alfred's worries that Bruce may be dead. The parallels between the two accounts show just how deeply Alfred cared for his ward. Alfred feared that Bruce would never return, but as the years continued, his fear seemed to turn to grim certainty. He believed that Bruce was not coming back. Either he was dead somewhere in Europe, or had chosen to start a new life. Alfred was heartbroken that he had lost yet another Wayne to the cruelty of the world. Just when the butler had given up all hope of seeing Bruce again, the young millionaire returned in 1891. Alfred was overjoyed to see him again, and the two quickly caught up. Bruce recounted tales of training with various masters across the world, some well-known and others not. As Bruce shared his experiences, he also began to share his plan now that he had returned to Gotham. He wanted to put a stop to the crime and corruption running rampant in the city. Alfred encouraged this idea until he learned the method that Bruce planned to use. With the birth of the Batman, Alfred begrudgingly agreed to aid his crusade. Alfred witnessed the Batman work on the Clayface case, and his reluctance slowly began to fade. He felt that Bruce was more than prepared for this calling, having seen him in action. Alfred realized that his own calling might be to help him in any way that he could. The two of them became an unstoppable team, working to systematically resolve the issues in Gotham. Not long after the Bat appeared in Gotham, the reign of the Ripper began. Alfred recounts in his journals feeling dread at the realization that he would have to witness his adoptive son go up against this demon, famously known to be from hell. Alfred may have feared for Bruce, but there was nothing he could do to stop him. The Batman would face Jack the Ripper, and both Alfred and Gotham City would never be the same. <laughs>